Hello, hello, everyone. This is your host, Akhil Jabbar, and welcome back to another episode of SAS District. In today's episode, we'll be talking about investing trends, niches, and success stories with Albion VC. Today, we have our guest, Robert Whitby Smith, joining us. Robert is a partner at Albion VC. They are an independent investment firm that backs visionary founders with long term capital and scale up expertise. With a billion dollars of venture, venture funds invested in over 50 companies, Robert focuses on deep tech and B2B software startups. His extensive experience of corporate financing and board level work allows him to provide strategic guidance on everything from culture all the way to fundraising. So welcome, Robert. Super excited to have you on the show today. Likewise, Akil. Thank you very much. Uh, would, would love to hear, uh, you know, start off the conversation today by just hearing a bit, a bit about your story and if you can share your background before we get into the, the deeper uh, niches of it. Yep. Um, thank you. So, um, I started off in, in finance, in corporate finance, uh, working for um, firms like KPMG, uh, Credit Suisse First Boston, and ING. Um, and then after just under 10 years, moved into moved into BC. So that was about 18 years ago. Uh, and I've been investing in B2B software at, at, um, at or around Series A ever since. Awesome. So how long have you been with uh, Albion VC now? So 18 years. 18 years. Wow. That's impressive. And yeah. can you start off, maybe people listening in, you know, we have founders of all stages. Uh, can you speak more about your investment thesis? What are you looking for in a company and what makes, what was an attractive uh, business for you? Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Um, so we, as I mentioned, we, we focus in terms of stage uh, at or around product market fit, so series A. Uh, we can invest either side of that, but that's our, that's our key focus area. Um, and we focus on B2B software. Um, and and within that, we are thematic investors, um, and and currently our, our key themes are um, sustainability, climate, data and AI, deep tech, uh, digital health, digital risk, and fintech. Um, and so, yeah, we're we're looking, as you mentioned, to find the best visionary founders, uh, and to and to help them scale and deliver returns to our investors. And uh, are you are you investing all over the world, or are you just specifically in the in the UK founders or in different locations? We yeah we 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 focus on UK based founders. UK. Um, okay, yeah. awesome. Um, and how, how do you? I mean, uh, interestingly, you know, before you know, there's a lot of founders right now who are looking to raise capital or in between rounds, or maybe looking to restart a startup. And it's it's, it's been an interesting time these last few months. And I actually saw a uh, interesting tweet this morning with a graph that showed the the number it's the highest numbers of shutdowns yet we've ever seen of startups basically shutting down uh, has been in Q3 2023. It's almost, you know, they have, there was 212 this quarter compared to last year, which was 125. It's almost double the amount of startups are shutting down. So this, it's been a very, very interesting time. How would you describe, uh, I guess, the current investment landscape for startups from your side in, in the UK and uh, or maybe your, your uh, network? Yeah. Um, so undoubtedly, it's much tougher than it. It has been, or it was, uh, in peak of the market 2020, 2021. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, um, I would I would say it's probably, if you were to compare the landscape, the funding landscape for, for startups, it's probably flat on 2022. Mm -hmm. um, and we're probably back to the sort of average levels of, you know, let's say 10 years ago, 2014 to 20, 2018. Mm -hmm. um, so, so... You know, deal activity has is uh, you know amount being deployed is is just over half what it was at the peak of the market, but it is I think I saw it's about four times what it was, for example, back in 2014. So there, there is there's a lot of dry powder. There's um, there's a lot of appetite to invest, um, and investors are very excited about you know the, the change going on in the world at the moment and the opportunities for investment. So I think it, it depends what you compare the base to. Um, if if you compare it to you know, the 2020, 2021, it, you yeah. know, it looks like a, a fall off a cliff. But if you, if you look at that longer term chart, as you're referring to, if you take out those, those few peak years, it looks like a steady upward trend. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, you've been investing for, for, for over 18 years now, you said, right? And, and you know, that's across different companies. And, and obviously the, the horse, or as they, as they call it, of the, of, the, of the, not the horse, that you're betting on the horse, but in this case, the founder is, is a big <laughs> part of that, right? And, you know, I'd love to hear from you 
any trends or any um, you know qualities you've seen specifically um, across founders over time that we say, okay, this is how I know I can you know that gives you trust or you're, that you can invest in this company. Be it besides you know the the metrics and, and the and the the numbers to look at. Um, that's a very good question. I guess I think as a, as a venture capitalist, you're always learning. Um, yeah, exactly. and I, I'd say, I'd say the, the, you know, the pattern matching and, and, and what you look for refines over time. Um, I think, I think one, one thing is, is not to, one thing I've, I've learned is not to over index against a specific picture or vision in your mind for what the ideal founder is. Mm-hmm. Um, I, th- I think, I think, um, you know, you've got to get the right team for the opportunity. I think that's, that's very important. Um, and to do that, you've got to work out what the right opportunity needs um, and, and, and kind of work through that. But I think there, there are some qualities that you, know, you, you mentioned, um, you, know, ability, you know, trust and, and integrity and values. There are some qualities that don't change over time. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I think, you know, for example, today, I would say pace is much more important than it was, um, you know, let's say 18 years ago, or even much more recently than that. The, the world moves moves incredibly quickly, um, yeah. and um, you know to take advantage of opportunities in that very fast, you you've got to move fast. I agree. Yeah, I mean, we're we're extremely excited here at Horizon, where most companies are. Yeah, you know, like I said, maybe we're slowing down. We're particular, but you know we're seeing a lot more activity, a lot more you know companies coming up, and you know we're ready to. We've been ready, and we've been doing deals and and in, uh, in these last months. So this is this is exciting, interesting times. But yeah, yeah. You know, as you said, the uh, things change rapidly, and you have to be ready for these moments, right? Um, yes, yeah, and I think there's also there's also um, uh, many more repeat founders, mm-hmm. either either you know, uh, as part of the founding team or inputting into startups, which I think is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, because yes, a lot of innovation is about first principles, but also you know learning lessons from the past. I think you know massively increases your probability of success. Absolutely. What advice? So, you know, we're speaking a lot from the, the investment perspective, from the investor side. But you know, from a startup and uh, from the CEO, as SaaS founders and CEOs who are, who are looking at the, they're at this stage now, and they're looking to raise capital. What advice do you have to them? Maybe one, maybe looking to grow their company, and then at that stage, you know, maybe looking to secure investment. Um. So, on, in terms of in terms of growth, yeah. um, it's it's probably. You know, the biggest driver is having 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 the right people. Um, most its problems boil down to the, the wrong people for the opportunity or or running out of money. Um, but you know, hiring the best people and managing motivating people uh, are, are very much learned skills. Um, and I, I think there's you know gathering in experience from uh, and, and advice from people around you to to hone those skills. For, for, for example, we have, uh, you know, a few years ago, we invested in a platform function where we've got a, um, you know, a head of talent um, helping people, you know, optimize their hiring process. It is it is where most of the money is spent in VC. Um, and, you know, most of the mistakes are when when those, and, and very expensive mistakes, when 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 you make the wrong hires. Um, so, so I think, you know, really, really optimizing never compromising on the quality of people trying to find the best people for the opportunity i think is how you how you best grow your company mm-hmm. um uh, and i think in terms of securing investment um we always say have an always on approach to fundraising so as soon as you've closed your round engage mm-hmm. with the investors for the next round mm-hmm. so if you so if you just closed a seed round you should be talking immediately to the ua investors in fact you've probably had a a large outreach from A investors um, uh, because they've seen the seed deal uh, in, and it's in a space they like. Um, so, and then and then you know, choose a, a, an appropriate number of VCs to nurture um, over over that per- period of time. Um, you know, making sure you know qualify them in properly that they've got you know money to deploy that it's a really good fit, it's a cultural fit, um, you know, values and alignment. Um, but you are both sides, both the founder and the VCs, are obviously going into a very long term relationship. There will be bumps in the road. It will be tricky. And I think both sides will make better decisions and build convictions quicker if they've had a longer period of time to get to know each other. Um, you, you know, you don't, you don't marry someone on a first date. Yeah. Um, so, so I think that that relationship building, you, you know, 
good good teams founders will be doing that with their prospects on customers and partners you know spending you know years potentially building relationship should be doing that with the founders you want um mm. and then and then i suppose the other the other bit of advice is it is it is fundraising is tougher particularly at later stages um so i guess we we'll talk about um scale up and growth um just making sure you've got enough runway so uh to achieve your milestones or or if you've got to the stage, ideally you have a choice as to whether or not you fundraise or not. What, what do you mean by, I guess, later stage, just to be to define clearly for our audience, and then why, why do you think that is that uh, it's more challenging right now than the earlier stage? So so I think if you look at the um, the level of activity of growth investors, um, it has fallen significantly in both in 2022 and then it fell again in 2023. Um, we 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 do a we do a survey of of um, Series A and growth investors uh, every quarter, um, and for example, when we surveyed them at the start of this quarter, um, they were forecasting sixty percent less deployment than they predicted a quarter earlier. Um, so, you know, the, I guess the the outlook, um, or, or I think I think growth investors, until the exit and IPO windows open up more fully. Mm. Um, those that are investing in the stage before those uh, will find it more difficult, um, mm. and so it's that's going to. It's gonna, I think growth invest the growth stage is going to remain challenging for a while. Yeah, fair enough. And you know, we 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 talk about you know, so maybe there's folks listening in who are maybe at that stage they're maybe struggling to maybe overcome some of these challenges or obstacles that they're looking to scale right at their scale stage, and they're looking to uh, maximize growth. But maybe they, they don't have access to the capital. Is there any, you know, with your experience working closely with SaaS startups, is there anything you can share with them on how they can maybe overcome these challenges effectively and, and give them extra runway uh, until they're able to secure their next round? Um, so if, if you can't secure um, external, new in, external investing, or it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take longer, um, I guess one other source is your existing investors. Mm-hmm. Um, to see if they will they will support a, you know bridge round or or convertible. Um, uh, another source would be uh, venture debt um, to extend runway. Um, you can also look at what you know whether um, you've, you've got customers or partners who could um, you know would would be willing to pay more upfront. Mm. Um, so, so rather than monthly in arrears, if you can get someone to do three years in advance, uh, that might make quite a big difference to your cash flows. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, then, of course, there's the, the that's the revenue side of it. On the cost side, um, uh, you know, considering you know whether whether you do need to make a reduction in force to um, to ensure you you have enough runway to get to those milestones. Yeah. You know, and what if, what if you're at that, that situation, you know, we're hearing this a lot, you know, if, if companies are shutting down, they're literally at the brinks at the end of their, what their, cap- their capacity, right? So if, I, if I'm a founder right now and I have one month left to, you know, of, of expenses and, you know, I'm, I'm on the edge of, of deciding whether to shut down or, but even though we're growing, um, we're, we have a great team, um, but we have bills to pay. What, what do you suggest to them, um, at this stage of their, of their startup? Goodness, uh, that's a yeah. pretty tough situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. No. Um, there's. I don't think there's much you can do once you've got down to yeah. that. Um, and it, I suppose it depends how big, how big the financing need is. I mean, have, have you seen this in, in your own portfolio of companies before? Have you seen in the past that in the 18 years where you know startup has come to you? Hey, we're in the last months. Things look good, but we just or is it something new and you haven't experienced before? So, so we're always tracking. Um, runway within our portfolio mm. companies, mm. Um, and you know we, we typically once a company is is getting below twelve months, we're monitoring mm. it quite closely. Mm. Um, and once it gets down to six months, we're advising you know they course correct if they're not able to um, you know raise that support from existing investors or venture debt or any other source of funding, then it it means a reduction in force. Um, mm-hmm. we, we're, and then at what stage it, do you reduce, reduce forces like three months in or, you know, at what stage so, do we have to cut costs? So, so I, th- I think the problem is if you're, um, you need to have enough time for it to make a difference. Exactly. Um, so, um, you know, the, the cuts you would need to make to survive if you've only got one month left are, you know, I guess 
pretty pretty fundamental or existential. Um, yeah. I think I think so. So I think at six months at six months point, we're we're typically uh, if if we're a current investor, then we've we've spoken to the other investors. We've established whether or not there's appetite to invest further, and if there isn't, we've communicated that to the company such that they can you know course correct whatever they need to do, mm-hmm. um, you know to 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 survive. Um, yeah. And also and also, I guess the other option is is um, seek an exit. Mm. Exactly. And that's what we're seeing more. So, so folks who are maybe considering, you know, shutting down and, you know, cutting costs, the other is another option here. And, you know, if you can't secure investment from your next round that, you know, exiting is a, is a, is a, is a great option, I guess, you know, even though it maybe sucks for some of your investors because you may not get the, the value you're hoping for, but at least you get some value it, out of the work, right? And, and, it, and it, it may suck for everyone. It may suck for the founders too, but, um, it, 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 it really depends. But I, but I suppose. Um, that decision around exit probably needs to be taken with about yeah. 12, 12 months runway. Mm. Um, unless your existing investors are willing to, to bridge to exit, i.e. if you started the, because you know, it's going to take mm. a while to mar- market something properly and yeah. get a decent amount of value for it. Yeah. Um, but, um, so somewhere between 12 months and six months, you need to have started that process. Um, yeah. Fantastic. That's a great advice for, you know, so anyone listening in, you're at that stage where you're six months away from, you know, uncertainty. I mean, if it's something to, to consider, you know, I think this is, this is fantastic advice here, how to approach mm-hmm. that problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, post, post, uh, investment from Albion's uh, team and yourself, could you provide uh, maybe some examples or stories of how you guys, uh, worked with, supported the founders, highlighting maybe some of the factors that, what really contributed to their growth and success? I know you mentioned one, which is about the hiring process, but maybe go a little bit deeper on what you, how you guys helped them there. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so as I mentioned, we got a platform team, and they help okay. with um, talent is number one, and the second one is is second biggest area we help with is go to market. Um, mm-hmm. So, building a scalable enterprise, um, you know, software go to market. Um, we also have a. Uh, you know, we, we, our, our portfolio is about 50 B2B software companies and we have communities in there of CEOs, CTOs, CFOs sharing problems and trying to find solutions. Um, so I suppose those, those are probably the three biggest areas where we, where we help. When we're, we're, um, we're typically joining the board, um, if we're leading a series A. Uh, and as part of that, you know, we often introduce, um, non-execs who we think can be, um, uh, you know, additive, uh, helpful, um, as well as um, on the talent side, helping them build out, you know, uh, scoping out what how, how best to build the team, the organization, um, and, um, you know, helping them make, you know, build the best team. Mm-hmm. Um, but it really, it depends on the, the experience of the founders. For example, you know, one of our exits, uh, a company called Grape Shot to Oracle, it was a, a founder, it was his third um, radio. Um, and, and therefore had a lot more experience of, um, you know, what, what a great go to market process looked like, you know, what great marketing looked like. Um, and so our level of input on go to market would have been, was a lot less. Um, whereas, whereas with some of the startup companies, you know, perhaps where they're, you know, technical founders and they haven't got, um, you know, they haven't got the experience in, in, in marketing or, or, or sales. Um, then, then we have a, have more input there. And on the talent side, so I, I completely agree. That's you know, definitely one of the most important parts, and that's why you focus on that, helping them build out the team. Um, are you guys, you know, like helping them build their their org chart down to, you know, do you have a team on, on internally for for HR and also always kind of sourcing and having you know, a pool of developers or whatnot to to hire from, or executives or or marketers, or, or how does that work? No, it's it's um it's it's more an advisory function. Mm. Okay. Um, so, so it is, it is that, as you mentioned, designing the org chart, the right org chart for the stage of the business, um, uh, how to build the, the best culture. And then what, what, you know, what the best tires will look like. So, um, building, um, scorecards for each of, each of the, hi- the roles you're going to hire, um, helping them select the best headhunters, um, and running, you know, sitting alongside, um, you know, in the passenger seat alongside whoever the key decision maker is on the hire, um, uh, getting the best out of that process. Mm. 
you're with them across on every kind of stage of that, you know, by their side to help them make better decisions, right? Which is the yeah, most important yeah. part of this, right? Yeah. 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 Not yeah. doing not doing the recruiting in house or, or ourselves, um, but really, really advising them on on how to do it. Yes. Yeah. And that and that's based on you know a huge amount of experience. Our our talent partner has has been doing it um you know nearly 30 years um across other funds including you know Baldston EQT um and um you know is a is a real expert in a in a field. Mm. Love it. This has been this has been awesome, Robert. Anything else uh you want to add to this before we go move to the second part of the interview, which is the rapid fire and personal questions? <laughs> uh, I should I should come up with something to try and uh, um, um no no that's I think that's that's really good. Okay. Um yeah, thank you. No worries. All right. Um Robert, what's that one activity you enjoy outside of work that gets you into flow state? Um I'm going to answer with a lot more than one. Uh, <laughs> okay, go for it. Again. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, I discovered yoga in um, in lockdown, mm. uh, and I really love that. That definitely, uh, you know, whenever you, whenever I hear the words flow state, I think of yoga. Um, but also, you know, playing sports, reading, um, you know, good films. Uh, but, yeah, lots of things get me into a flow state. Yeah, love it. Robert, what's uh, one piece of advice you wish you had known? And if you can go back, uh, you would tell your 25-year-old self, say. I'm terrible at, say, at giving one answer to anything. <laughs> but, um, so if you'll forgive me, I'll, I'll, uh, go for it. I'll, I'll stretch, stretch it a bit. So I think one is understanding and appreciation of mental health. Mm. Um, I did a mental health first aid awareness course um, a few years ago. And... I think that's fantastic. And when, if you think about what founders, you know, if someone founded a business maybe three years ago, they've been through COVID, they've been through, you know, layoffs, they may have had those near-death experiences you're talking about, they've been, been through down rounds. It's, it's really tough. Um, and I think you need to appreciate, um, in the same way, you know, people's physical health, um, you know, for, for, you know, the, the people on your team, your colleagues, uh, your family, your society, everything. I think it's it's something that I think awareness generally has in, has increased um, mm. over the last few years, but I think there's there's so much further to go. Um, the second one is is around um, pace. Um, when when you invest with twenty four months runway, I mean a lot of a lot of people, um, uh, or in the past, um, I've, I've seen them. You know, we've closed our fundraising. You know, let's let's relax a bit. That was a very tough process. And, it, no doubt it was, um, but actually, if, if you're talking about that 24 months and you you want to have raised before you're down to six months cash and having to make some you know reduction in force type decisions, you've only got 18 months to deliver your milestones. And when you start to think how long it takes to hire someone, you know notice period, onboarding, sales cycles, it, you really have to hit the ground running and and run fast. Um, and and if if any if there are any slips on the way, you know you've got to course correct and, and still get it done within that that sort of 18 month window so i think of just appreciating the importance of pace i think is is a, is a second one and 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 the third one for me is um product market fit is a thesis which you you have you have to constantly test um and i think often people start or or um you you perhaps misidentify product market fit or a company loses product market fit and you're still pumping lots of money into go to market uh, and sometimes perhaps you even dial up your go-to-market spend to, you know, um, try and make up for the fact that demand's not there. But I think you've got to, you've got to be very honest with yourself uh, and, and keep asking a question, have we, have we really got product market fit? Mm. Love it. I'll stop yeah, at I mean, three. I'll stop at three. Yeah, that's great. I was just pondering on all of them. But, you know, the first one we should talk about, which is about, you know, the mental health. And you know, we talked a lot about here about startup success. You know, we, we share about accomplishments, but, you know, failure is a big part of this um, as we're seeing, and you know, we we take that lightly, but that is very challenging for people to accept as entrepreneurs. We're go getters, we're a players. We we are creators. We like to build, and seeing yep. what we create uh, fail in the eyes of the market is is very hard to accept during well. So, I imagine it's, it's difficult times. So. And also, yeah, I mean, if you're if you've you know the personal responsibility you feel towards your early investors and your and and more 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 towards your early hires, you know, they may have left you know secure jobs. You know, maybe they've got a family. Um, and, and you're having to, you know, lay them off. It's 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 a tough decision. And most successful companies have been through a near death experience. 
uh, one way or another. Um, oh. So um, I, I, I don't, I don't uh, yeah, is it, is it, I think it's, um, I think it's Snowflake, I think it was their Series E, they, 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 um, they struggled to find external investment for. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, it's, right. it's, yeah, it's, it, it's, um, and that's, is that the best B2B software company ever? Um, so it, it's, it's really hard. Uh, it can be really hard. So I think appreciation of what people are going through and what they might be going through at home and what your colleagues might be going through, I think is, is really important. I, I completely agree. Yeah. What, what are some of the biggest challenges you're currently facing, I guess, in, with the, as you're working, continue to grow, you know, Albion VC, the existing portfolio and, and maybe trying to grow it? So. I've, I've, um, I've alluded to it, which is, is the growth funding market. So we're, we're investing at Series A. Um, and I guess what we're trying to do is get companies from A to B. Um, and the Series B, Series C market is very quiet at the moment. So our, our big question is, you know, when's that going to, um, you know, return? Um, and I think that that itself, as I mentioned, is driven by sort of MA, IPO market. And again, when will, when will that recover? Um, so those those are the big questions we're you know we're scratching our head over because if if we're if we're not confident, for example, the next stage of funding is available um, when the company needs it, then our company's got to course correct again um, and you know extend runway, uh, which you know typically means I guess a reduction in force or you know lower marketing program spend or you know whatever it might be, but yeah. dialing back dialing back growth because there isn't confidence in that growth funding. Yeah. Is it the, uh, do you guys go, you know, pr- provide kind of mostly bridge, f- uh, financing at this point if they're at that stage or, um, or are you just, kind yeah. of, you know, waiting on the, on the sidelines? Yeah. There's yeah. been, I think bridge funding has definitely been the theme for most VCs over yeah. the last, um, last yeah. year or two. Um, yeah. but, but I think there's only, there's only so far, you know, you can, you can sensibly bridge. And also the bridge is not, not the same as the next round. Exactly. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be a fraction of that. And, um, uh, you know, it is, it is, yeah. Um, it's always, it's always a shame when you see an amazing company having to, you know, purposefully dial back growth. Um, because they're, they're, you know, they're cautious around the funding market or the next stage of the funding market. So it is, it's, it's, it's painful to watch, but I think we, every, everyone thinks growth funding will come back next year. The question is when. The question is when, yeah. That's interesting, right? So even if you have these great opportunities coming towards you and you want, you'd like to invest in them, if the next round isn't available, you know, still doesn't uh, help the case, right, of investing in the company. Well, well, it means, it means you have to, um, uh, think differently about the, about the, the plan, you know, the business plan you're backing. Right. So for example, if it's, let's say you're, you're, you, you would typically invest with a 24 month runway and yeah. that, you know, uh, you're aiming to close the next round 12, 18 months after your investment. Unless yeah. you're confident the market's there, then you might need to invest with a longer runway, mm. <clears throat> or or you go in with a lower burn so that you can um, you can course correct, you can be more um, more flexible. Um, and, and, and would you set that as kind of a does that change your investment uh, you know thesis and requirement from the founder? Right, so you're having this conversation early on. You know, a new founder comes to you today. Um, is that kind of the conversations you guys are, are talking about and thinking about? Yes. Yes, very much so. And I think, um, uh, the, I'd say that probably the VC industry as a whole should have been having those conversations a few years ago, uh, when mm-hmm. it was growth at, growth at any cost. But yeah, the, the attitude to, you know, um, being flexible, um, and, and being willing to course correct, um, I think is, is, is really important now. Awesome. Yeah. Robert, um, could you share maybe some, maybe who or what are some of the best Three, I know you like three, so three resources. <laughs> it could be, you know, books, mentors, or people you follow in the space we'd say have been most instrumental to your success over these last few years. Um, so because you said three, I'll, I'll probably <laughs> go for more than three. Um, <laughs> stop me, stop, stop me when I, um, sure. so I think in, in terms of, in terms of mentors, um, it's, it's more, I've learned most from, you know, the people I've had, you know, the privileged pleasure to work with. So, you know, it's the, it's the founders, the non-execs, they're often, you know, former CEOs, um, uh, and, you know, colleagues I've probably, i probably learned more from than, um, you know, uh, um, people I follow, for example, online. Um, okay. I would, I would say, 
um, books. I definitely agree with the leaders of readers um, uh, statement. I mean, there there are some you know some fantastic books I'd recommend to people who if they haven't if they haven't read them, um, like Andy Grove's Higher Output Management, um, Patrick Lincoln's Five Dysfunctions of a Team, Jeff Moore's Crossing the Chasm, mm. Sebastian Malaby's Power Law, Peter Thiel's Zero to One. I think mm. those are all fantastic books if you're if you're you know, um, either a founder or going to be investing in you know early stage technology. And then I think also um, if you're if you're becoming an investor you know, from that side of things, then I would I would definitely recommend people read you know uh, Warren Buffett and Ben Graham's you know whilst it, whilst we're growth investors um, and you know Ben Graham is the father of value investing. You know those sort of basic investment principles and what what makes a sound business and a sound investment. I think are always good to have as a uh, you know within within your toolkit. Love it. Yeah, all fantastic books. I agree. Uh, we'll, we'll put all those links in the show notes, guys. Those are at least those six books, so we'll put them in, yeah. in the show notes for people to yeah. check out. So thank you. Um, My pleasure. Robert, what does success mean to you today? How do you define it yourself? You know, whether that's personally, business, financial, life, you know, there's no right answer. Um, so number one is is a happy and healthy family. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I have a wife and two children. I think that's that's number one. Um, number two is is um, is is doing my job to the best of my ability. So that's you know supporting, finding and supporting the best founders um, and and delivering attractive returns for our investors. Um, then probably number three, as you pointed out, I like to do things in threes. Um, is is um, to to give back and contribute to society. Um, so that's probably how I'd define success personally. Yes, love it. This has been fantastic, Robert. I appreciate all you you shared on the show today. Uh, for any founders who are listening in uh, and they want to get in touch with you, learn more about you, Albion VC, or you know maybe just chat with you for, for advice, where would be the best, best place to go? Um, so my, my my email is is is, um, is on our website, but it's it's fairly simple. It's Robert at Albion VC. Um, uh, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, all, all, all the usual channels, or, or you can go through Albion BC website. Um, okay. yeah, but I'm reasonably easy to get hold of. Okay, awesome. We'll add your, we'll add your, we'll add Robert's email, website, and his LinkedIn on the uh, show notes if you guys want to reach out. So thank you, thank you so much, Robert. This has been awesome. Appreciate you, your, your time today. Kill, okay, thank you very much. Okay. Cheers. Thank you all for watching this episode and joining SAS District today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for future episodes where we interview top leaders in the SaaS industry. If you're a SaaS company looking to grow and unlock the true value of your business, get in touch with us at Horizon Capital and myself or one of our consultants will provide a free assessment to help you get there and hit your goals. If you have any feedback or suggestions for this podcast, please comment down below and help us improve our content for you all. Thanks again and see you on the next one.